Hey, Phil started a game. Okay, this is awesome. Sweet. So, um, this will be my student for probably the next hour or so. After, after the game finishes, we'll hop on call. And Phil is playing white. I do have the Phil command, which kind of explains who he is. Pretty well-known figure in the poker community. And he'll be participating in this uh, chess tournament for poker players. So over the course of the next like month or two, I'll probably give, be giving more on-stream lessons to participants of this tournament. Um, and yeah, he actually already had a lesson with Anna Rudolph a couple of days ago. And I know he's a, a big fan of the Jobava London, which he's kind of playing here, even though this came from an England gambit. Um... Interesting play. Nothing wrong so far. It's a, it's a bit more exotic than than what most people would do with the the king side advance. But one uh one strategy I th I think Phil probably knows this, but when you advance the pawns on the king side, very often you end up casting queen side. I like queen d4. Queen d4 is a really nice move. Because white's preparing to castle queen side, but also making it so if black castles queen side, the a7 pawn falls. It's hard to remove the queen. Yeah, this is a really nice setup, actually. Because black can't really castle this way. If black castles this way, white's in really good shape to attack. Like h4, h5. Yeah, this is this is Phil's wheelhouse. He's uh I know he uh he studied the Simon Williams course like really in depth. Um So the the play so far is probably at a much higher level. And black hasn't really gone wrong either. Just a slightly less pleasant position for black. And we might cover a little bit of this in the, the lesson, but uh, like transitioning from the opening to the middle game, because he, he got his kind of nice setup, but then the question is what to do next. And especially in position, ooh, he grabs a pawn. I was gonna say, especially in positions with opposite side castling, usually you want to attack as quickly as possible. Um. I think that was actually a blunder because black had rook d8. But black instead went for just a, basically the trade of pawns. Getting messy. These pawns are hanging. This pawn's hanging. I still like white's position. If we go back a few moves, um, if black played rook d8 here, this could have been very troublesome for white. Like white should have probably should have stormed on the the king side in some way. Yeah, this is it's probably what I would play defending the pawn. The downside of this move is the c file becomes half open. Um. Okay, pawns are are, are falling left, left and right, and maybe center. But actually now, so the fact that white lost F and the G pawn, now the, the files are half open. So the rooks could come in potentially, but you probably don't want to allow queen takes e3 forcing the queen trade. Oh, also this is a threat. Actually a scary position. Also, hello to those just joining. Um... Yeah, this is basically the first part of the lesson, even though we're not on call yet. I like King B1. This is a move that Phil should be very, um, very familiar with playing, especially in, in these sort of openings. Like, King is just safer there. H5, nice move. Um, very open position. It's very easy to go wrong for either side here. H6. Playing like alpha zero, but just losing a pawn. But now, okay, all the files are open, so the rooks can uh, can have some fun. 
He's probably thinking about sacking. Lesson with Anna the other day, uh, they were talking about sacking. Sack material for the attack. Ooh. I don't think that's what I would have played. It's interesting, though. Like, it's initiative. It's actually a really cool game. If he wins this game, then he can be compared to, like, Tall or Morphe. If he loses, then... Uh, he can be compared to, like, PogChamp's participants. But there's some lasting pressure here. Knight is pinned. The problem... Yeah, the problem is Black's pieces are good. Ooh. I honestly did not see that move. I was thinking more, like, stay on the king side, but... I mean, that looks like a free pawn. Now the question is, will he see the fact that the queen is defending from far away? And will he not will he make sure he doesn't get made in on the back rank? So there are some landmines for white. That's playable. Is there an increment? Oh, there might not be increment here. All right, let's watch. Oh, there is increment, I think. I've <laughs> seen the time control. A3 was a good move. I was just going to say that um, it's so important to make like a just a safe square for the king, what we call making luft. So now black is trying to attack. Mm, now white wins the pawn. It's actually a crazy position. I don't know how valuable the extra rook is. It's not a decisive advantage for black at all. Both kings kind of unsafe. Really got to watch the time. I'm trying to figure out the exact increment. Because it just says five minutes, but I saw the time go up after a move was made. Also, maybe queen here. These open positions, it's so important to like see the whole board. Oh no, your time. You gotta move. Where's the Hikaru extension? Hikaru save. Oh no, it's too late. Oh no. Okay, well. Wow. Uh, that was a really cool game though. I mean, that, that's like something we can start with. Oh, Queen E7 also playable. Yeah, a couple ways to fork the, the Knight and the Rook. Yeah, just move. I have to learn how to say it in like a really mean and urgent way. Hello. Hey, Phil, how's it going? Oh, I'm so bad. Ah, well, that, that was super fun to watch. Um, uh, I got in time trouble. I panicked. I know I, had a, I, know I was winning early. Mm -hmm. And it happens to me every time. So nice to speak with you. I'm a little tilted right now. But um, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, yeah, it's a pleasure. I mean, it, tilt is a natural feeling after a game like that. You were you were, oh. you were close to pulling off the brilliancy. I, I was saying that if you won the game, you'd be compared to Morphe because it was the same style as uh, like the whole attacking, attacking uh, on the king side. But um, there's a lot of lessons to take away from oh. that game. Yeah, uh, play longer games. Yeah, playing longer games. <laughs> the five minute games. Five minute games. I'm just not. I'm not strong enough to see what I'm supposed to do in time. I felt like I, sure. I had a winning thing. I had a winning position, like half. You know, right out of like move fifteen or move seventeen or something, and then I just fell apart. I don't know. Yeah, and we can if you want to start by by just going through uh, maybe just a few of the key moments because there were definitely some missed opportunities where uh yeah you you had chances to really just tear apart your opponent yeah i would love i would love the uh sensei's uh instruction on on how to make it better i think i i think one of the things that i forgot to do i've got to move the 
the rook the d rook over to the g file yeah so i was watching your lesson uh, with anna from the other day and you, yeah. you guys covered a lot of similar concepts which you could have applied in this game in terms yeah. of like building up the attack before you go absolutely insane and just sack everything hoping it works <laughs> So sometimes it takes a few times for, to put the the study into practice. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, I'll I'll go ahead and send you an invite. Let me see if I can actually load this up. Sweet. All right. Okay. So and now you see the pieces moving. I hope. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you. Uh, it seemed like you just kind of stuck with your comfort zone of playing like this Jovava London setup, even though it was more of a, this is what we call the England gambit. When Black plays yeah, I don't too. like it when they do this against me. I'm, I'm much mm. more comfortable if they don't. Uh, I know a lot more of the, the lines when they don't push that E pawn so early. Sure. Yeah, this kind of disturbs your whole setup because you can't play the media bishop f4 and uh, do right. your, your normal stuff at the same time this is just kind of a dubious move and yeah like just taking it is the best approach and like what you did in the game was actually really nice just like developing very naturally um and i don't really have too much criticism uh actually i, I like what you did because you you expanded on the king side you got very playable middle game position I was praising this move queen d4 as just like a really nice uh not only improving move but you prevent black from casting queen side because then you yeah that's what that was my main goal I was, I was like well why why he's trying to go queen side i'm like well mm -hmm. i'm not i'm gonna forget that and then i'm not gonna let him ruin my pawn structure i'll protect my bishop at the same time definitely yeah and you create a situation where like box king was a little bit stuck because you castle yeah. queen side and then if black castles king side which is what happened in the game you were in full kind of full attacking mode i was ready to go four. and that that's my that, yeah when i get this queen side castle and they go king i know i'm ready to to go but i think i've i forgot to move the rook to, to the g file before i got going a bit later, yeah, maybe there is some improvements. Uh, yeah. Of course, first you had to deal with your queen. You you move back. This is fine. And then, so here, there was a tactical moment. I think both of you, you and your opponent, missed uh, this possibility. Um, you took the yeah, pawn. Yeah, I could the pawn right now. Yeah, yeah. Which which I, you I did. did take the pawn right. Now. But the problem yeah. is, you you put this bishop in danger. And black has a really powerful response to basically punish the fact that your bishop is aligned with your queen. Just moves the knight, moves a rook over. So rook d eight, and all of a sudden, like your bishop's pin, you're probably going to be losing okay, a piece that, here. Yeah. So this pawn on d six, even though it looked free, it was just what we call a poison pawn, not worth taking. Yeah. Uh, you were much better off. Uh, probably just focusing on the king side, making some uh, some clear attacking move. I mean, you could start with h5. I mean, these moves always you can consider. If you notice the fact that queen's attacking your f-pawn, maybe a simple move here is e4. Just ensuring ah. that you're Work, blocking the diagonal. Um, your knight still supports yeah. the bishop. And then... Yeah. When you play e4, you're you're securing control over d5 as well, which is nice for your knight eventually. Uh, um, but let's uh, yeah. let's get to the juicy part of the game because a lot of things got traded. King b1 was a really nice move. Very often, when you castle queen side, your king's just safer, um, like towards the edge rather than towards the center. Well, I knew I was going to lose the e3 pawn, and I didn't want to get in check at the same time. Yeah, that's very true. Actually, the, the reason to play king b1 is that when the queen takes on e3, you're not forced to trade queens. You can just move right. your queen to a square, like even f5, because you're you're in better shape still to attack on the king side. Um, and then coming up here, this, this reminded me exactly of that, that moment in your lesson with Anna 
which I, I watched the whole thing last night. It was a great lesson, by the way. Um, where like the the decision is whether to sack immediately or to play like some kind of preparatory move. Yeah. And sacking almost worked out, but uh but rook g1 is Bad just play. a lower risk move that you can play pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're threatening to take on h6, and black is still under a lot of pressure. And actually, the fact that you lost like all of your your kingside pawns, like fg and h pawn, in some sense it benefits you because you have the files for your rooks. Yep. Um, there, there's a quote that I like to say: "Every pawn lost is a file opened." So sometimes you're okay with losing pawns, <laughs> just so your rooks become happier. Um, but then, okay, what happened in the game? There's one more moment, just just a tactical moment I want to point out here. Maybe even have you find the the move here because at this point you were you were very low on time and um, yeah, I think uh, you just ended up losing on time. But in this position, uh, I want you to look for tactics. It's white. Oh, to I can go uh, e7, e7 and and fork. Yep. Yeah, queens are so good, like in open positions, especially when there's undefended pieces to kind of use the board yeah. geometry. Um, queen e7, I think, guarantees you to win. I might, be, I might actually be winning if I can get that move in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure white is winning here. Um, checking. Yeah, engine is giving like plus four almost. That's is, barely uh, winning for <laughs> Yeah, still anything could happen like in, in time pressure, but... Um, I, I think a game like this is like kind of good preparation for your tournament situation or your, your upcoming tournament because you're going to you're going to be in situations where you're pressured on time or you have to rely on instincts you really have to manage your time and um, sometimes make uh, make quick decisions so yeah. another tactic here is queen b6 which I, I thought um, I saw initially this isn't as good though even though you attack the rook and the knight, uh, let me ask you: What can Black do to defend here? Uh, what could Black do to defend? Um, um, what can he? Um, I'll I'll give you kind of just general Sorry, advice. Yeah, I, don't, when, I, don't, I don't see it. When two pieces okay. are attacked, sometimes yeah. what you can do is use one of the pieces to defend the other piece. Defend the other. Okay, yeah. Rook to E8. Uh, yeah. So Rook E8, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, this uh, this would defend the knight. The pawn would still fall, but uh, this is, of course, better for, for black compared to the other line with Queen E7. Um. Anyway, that was that was a nice warm up, um, and I think I think your white repertoire, as you as we kind of chatted about, uh, I guess before this lesson, and I, I know you mentioned with your, your yeah. in your lesson with Anna that your your white repertoire is a lot more um, kind of comfortable, and maybe your black repertoire is uh, the thing that needs work. Yeah, well, I um, so I've studied it a lot. Right, it's always easier to play. And I'm a, I like to attack, so it's easier to to get into an attacking situation with white. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also I bought the Simon Williams uh, Jabava London course on Chessable, and that guy's just a, a he's got such a great style on video. Mm -hmm. um, did an amazing job with that. With that, I think um, highly recommend it. I think it shows in your my... play too. Like seeing your games, if it seems like you understand the Joe Pavel London even better well, than a lot of like expert level players. All fifteen hours, three times, and like work through all the chessable click, 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 click. click That's impressive. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I understand a little bit more about that one. Um, you know, I'm I'm a new chess player. I've I've only been playing for less than a year. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but I, I I really like that course. Um, I don't know. It, I I don't get lost, uh, you know, like completely just blown off the board and 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 that um and that opening for white very often. Mm -hmm. 
you know, give my opponents a chance to mess up every once in a while. Definitely. And I think that's kind of what you what you're looking for in an opening. So like you you have some sense what to do early on. Um, yeah. You're getting kind of the same, um, not only like the same kind of opening setup, but also leading into the middle game. You'll get a lot of recurring middle game ideas, a lot of situations where you end up casting queen side, attacking on the king side. Yeah. And that. Yeah, can... I love that. I love that setup. I, I, I don't know. It just suits mm -hmm. my. It suits me better to castle queen side and go all in on the king side. Definitely. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, and I think probably what we should focus on is improving your black openings. And I know we talked a little <laughs> bit about this um, working on, on something that you're you're a bit more comfortable yeah. with where you don't like lose immediately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I get a lot of uh a lot of black games that are over in seven moves, you know, where I just I, don't, I have no earthly idea what to do. Yeah, and I I went ahead and looked at some of your recent oh, no. Blitz games, and I saw some yeah. pretty pretty clear disasters. Terrible. Yeah. Um. Do you even? I I have some of them saved. I could bring them in if you want to. Oh look no! At them, don't or... <laughs> Yeah, let's uh or we could focus uh, on something uh let's do, let's let's, let's learn um let's go from, let's move forward not look into sure. the past sounds good okay so i i know you were playing this like e6 b6 which is something so, you can kind of save as kind of as a, another weapon but um i know I we should probably the, expand the uh rosman's course mm -hmm. on that um but evidently it hasn't sunk in um because i still lose way too quickly I don't mind losing. I just don't want to lose quickly. I think, yeah. you know, at, at the 12 under 13, you know, I've, I've been as high as 1377. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's wrong with me now. Um, but uh, at, at this level, just giving your opponent rope, mm -hmm. just sticking around long enough where you're not clearly just, you know, blunder to peace or whatever, give them enough time to blunder. You know, that, that seems to be a good thing. Um, yeah, I just need I need a I need something that'll keep me around in the game a little bit longer so that I've got a chance. Definitely. And that's really what the strategy should be. Just get out of the opening alive with with a position where you have some sense like where your pieces should yeah. go, where you're not like losing immediately. And then like most of the games um really at any level are not determined in the opening, but determined later on in the middle game, usually by tactics or blunders. Or by like the eventual time scramble or end games, so um, that's where like more of the focus should be. But getting you off on the right footing, where you're you're, you're not losing in the opening, is maybe the first step. And yeah. uh, hopefully, we can we can give you just a, a more solid repertoire. Um, and I know you you made an effort to learn the French at some point. Oh. <laughs> I bought, I spent $200 on Anish Giri's French course. repertoire on festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I lasted seven minutes. Um, <laughs> it's nothing, I mean, he's an amazing player. I love watching him, but I could not follow along at the speed at which he was trying to teach. Um, that was the wrong choice for me. Yeah, um, slightly expensive mistake, maybe, but. Yeah, I, I think yeah, that's what okay. is geared I, towards. I, I, I consider my contribution to his uh, to his greatness. Um, I'm not asking for a refund. Maybe, a, maybe in two or three years, I might be on a spot, a better spot. To, yeah, who knows? Like maybe, maybe in a few years, you'll you'll be like uh, you'll be a much stronger player, and the the course will actually yeah, make I'll, sense. Yeah, and I don't think there's a resale market for it right now. Otherwise, I'd be mm. offering it at half price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe you can search the the dark web for I don't know, but probably not the best use of your time. Um, so yeah, um, I, I know we we chat a little bit uh, just with Anna about what openings you sh would would make sense to pursue, because the French I think is still like a very friendly, kind of stable opening where if you know some of the basic ideas. You, you can get like a pretty easy position to play and um, yeah. and be more comfortable than your opponent. Um, but then the other thing, yeah. like when you're black, yeah. you not only have to be prepared for e4, you have to be prepared for d4. Um, right. So we can like we, we can focus on e4 and look at French, 
we can focus on D4 and look at like Queen's Gambit in London. Um, we do want to cover everything eventually, but I, I think for today, we should start with uh, with maybe E4 or D4. Um, let's go French. Let's go French. I'm a little bit, a little bit more familiar with those. Okay. And do you know how to flip the board? Um, you you have the little toggle thing. Oh uh, yeah. So you should look from Black's perspective. Yeah. Yep. Got it. And with French, there are different things White can play. But maybe we'll play out a game. We'll see where it goes, and I'll, I'll test kind of the the knowledge okay. that you acquired from this Geary course, and we'll see how far that takes you. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this. Um, this is one of the most common variations. Okay, I go like I go mm -hmm. like that. Okay, and I go like that, putting more pressure on the D pawn. And now I got a few options. I usually, sometimes I think you're supposed to go like that. Okay, Although okay. that can get pretty complicated, I think. There, there are a few options. I would recommend Queen B six. Okay. And I mean the the thing with French, like there, there is a lot of like specific lines. Like if you want to learn it at a high level, there is approach of trying to like memorize all the specific lines. But then there's approach of just kind of understanding where your pieces should go, understanding kind of your ideal yeah. setup. And I think that's probably a, a easier approach to begin with because not all your opponents yeah. will, will go into specific like theory and uh, you should just understand kind of the basic plans and concepts. Um, but so common, especially when you get kind of this typical French structure where white advances the pawn early. One of your main yeah. ideas is to build up a lot of pressure against d4 with your pawn, yeah. knight, and queen. So queen b6 that. is yeah. a move that you, you don't really have to think too much about. It's just usually where your queen should go in the French. Um, and there's a few ways white can try and deal with this. Um, we'll start with some of the potential mistakes white can make. Um, let's imagine bishop to e3. What comes to mind here? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so obviously I, I, if I, I can't really take, you got too many defenders now. Um, so obviously I, I assume you're counting like defenders and attackers. White has four defenders on, on yeah. G4. Yeah. So I, I really, I, it feels like I, I want to get castled if I can. Um, but I, I got a long way to go to, to get mm -hmm. castled. I, uh, I've seen the G, the H6 thing in, in a couple of videos where, mm. okay, yeah, you can take it, but not a big deal. I'll take back with the pawn and I get the open G file and he's not castled yet either. Um, but if he doesn't, then I'm going to put the, the, I'm going to put the knight on F5 um, in the next move and put another Put another attacker there. It's funny. I was playing Blitz earlier. Uh, I don't know if you were watching like one of my earlier Blitz games, but I, I had the same sort of idea from a French structure. Um, yeah. And it, this is a good one to know. Um, we're going to come back to this because yeah. I want to tell you right away, this this move was a, a terrible mistake from White. And Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I can just uh, hose you right there. I don't think you made a move, but I assume you're you're seeing queen takes b two. Yeah, yeah. Queen b two is is just a free pawn, um, and the the bishop. Uh, usually, when your queen comes to b six, the bishop is just tied down to c one. So right, it's one benefit when you play the French when you get your queen here. You not only pressure the d four pawn, but you tie down the bishop on c one. Yeah. And whenever, like even in the opening, but this applies to any stage of the game, whenever your opponent makes a move, you want to be aware of what changes in the position, what potential yep. squares or pawns are left undefended. Um, so white, uh, white does have to be a bit more careful here. Um, yep. Let's look at another move. Let's say bishop d3. How would you react to this move? Yeah. Uh, so 
my so now I've got and now if I take you take uh, you, yeah I've got now I've got three attackers and you only have two defenders because the bishop's in the way. So I think I can. Take... That's good. Okay, so you can count. Um, good skill. <laughs> that's yeah. As a poker player, that's a very important skill. Um, Math is coming in handy. Yeah. So this is great that we're covering uh, this now and that you're not kind of going to suffer in the future when you get this in a game. Because if, if this happened in a game, Black is is completely lost here. And I want you to look one more move oh. ahead. Because you, you fell for actually oh, one yeah. of the most common traps that French players fall for. What? Oh, you're going to go like that. Bishop b5 the and the, yeah, yeah. The, queen, uh, the queen is lost. Um, okay. So... Even though you were right, yeah. like you had three attackers, we Don't can say D4 is still defended by I this remember. tactic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So you yeah, have a I move here. You have a move here to basically deal with the fact that white ha white's, white's going to be threatening Bishop B5 in the end. Um, oh, I'm supposed to go like that. I'm supposed to go. I'm supposed to put the bishop in front of the king. Bishop d7. Yeah. Um, that and way. I remember now. Yeah. Now, now if white does something. Now if they don't. Like now I can castling, go to the take, take, take thing, and yeah. Now I can go. Then you can take, and after takes, takes. So whenever you want to basically take on d4, you have to make sure that there's no potential mm -hmm. check the bishop can give. Right. Yeah, I remember now. Um, and then, yeah, then you'd win like a key center pawn against a lot of like weaker players. Sometimes you can get away with winning the pawn early in the center. Um, now, this is this is actually a gambit. Uh, this this is a, a potential gambit White can play, where White gives away the pawn, tries to get some like early initiative because your queen's kind of a target. Um, this is not something you have to worry too much about. I don't think you'll encounter this too often at, at your level. And very often you can just complete developing uh, like knight e7, bring the knight to c6, bring the bishop in castle, and then this pawn is also going to be a uh, potential weakness later. So, I would. Uh, what do you think about Bianchetto here? Because uh, it feels like if I go if mm -hmm. I go with the knight there, it's like four moves to get everything settled. But if I go, uh, if like I go G6. here, I can put. Right now, I can. It's a little bit faster. I it feels like maybe I'm wrong, but um, it's one possibility. Um, it's actually it's not so much faster. And and one thing, actually, I'll I'll probably give you kind of a hard rule that in most cases you don't want to fiancado or fiancado in the French. Just because when you commit to e6 and g6, it's weakening to f6. Ah. Uh, and very often you just want to leave the pawn back. Um, okay. If you if you want to try and be a bit safer on the king side, like most often the bishop will come here or here. Um on just kind of a better uh better, more central square. Um yeah. Another approach to kind of keep the king's side safe is to bring the knight to e7 and then g6, where you then kind of block the diagonal and you still pressure the pawn on e5. Okay. Yeah, um, that looks that looks good. Um, my, my my first instinct here would be uh, put the bishop behind the queen, make the battery or whatever you're supposed to call it. Um, that to me that feels like a fill move. Ah, like bishop like, c5. I don't, know if it, I, don't know, I don't know if it's the best move, but bishop c5, it feels like something that I would do if it's not terrible. Sure. Yeah, and, and that's also possible. Um, actually, bishop c5, there's a lot of playable moves here. Um, and this is like this is a position that's been studied for probably at least like 100 years. There's, there's probably books written about this, uh, this specific opening. Um, but like... If you can just kind of develop castle and not plunder anything, that's usually the the primary plan. When you play bishop c5, sometimes the the main thing you want to be concerned about is bishop e3, where then you're you're skewered. Um, but this isn't oh. the 
uh, like a, a big issue for you because you do have a square for your queen to then still keep the bishop defended. Yeah. As queen b4. Yeah. And even if your queen gets kicked, you can move back to b6 and you keep everything under control and you're still up a pawn and you're going to complete development and um, yeah, you're doing fine here. So, so yeah, that's just one example line of when you win the pawn early and uh, and white didn't really make not too early. Effort, uh, I, I, I not tried, too early. I tried that's to win true. it too early. And I got checkmated. So, yeah, so very important queen, uh, to to recognize uh, the potential tactic when white sets this up right. Um, so when you play bishop d seven here, um. Perhaps more often, white will try and actually keep the pawn defended. Uh, and there are a few moves here for white. Maybe the most kind of natural looking is bishop to c2. Um, then just kind of unleashing the queen. So now there there are three defenders. Yeah. Well, now I, do, I, now I just, I'm not, he's not really threatening anything. I don't think, I just, I just, I want to get castled. Um, but it, I don't really like this deep. If I move my knight first, then my d pawn. I don't really want to have to take back with the queen. I don't know. Um, maybe it's better to trade him now. Yeah. So trading now is actually a very fair approach. And you you make a good point. If you move the knight now uh, to e seven, then then white could take, and your queen gets a little bit iffy. Um, so after bishop c2, taking on, on d4 is, is timely. And very often when you take on d4, white takes back, then you have an additional square to work with now. Now that the c-pawn is no longer here, yeah. is uh, this b4 square. I can go check and he'll move his something. And... Yep, and, and bishop b4 check, uh, completely fine developing move, knight c3. And 97 and you're getting castled um now there there are a few things to address because you have to be careful of like dealing with uh with potential king side attacks um and we might go yeah, back one and, thing that uh, happens to me, it, it mm -hmm. happens to me a lot um i see both those bishops bearing down on the king side his queen can get over there quick his knights one more move he's got the e5 pawn which is like one of those pawns that that I've heard uh, sets up the Greek gift, or um, is that what it's called? So th there is a like exactly the Greek gift, which could happen if you're not careful. Right. Um, yeah, and it just looks terrible to castle that side, but I've already screwed my queen side. I don't want to go that way either. Mm -hmm. um, so I I, I want to show you like what could go very wrong. And then, then I'm going to show you, actually, we're going to go probably a few moves back and show an even better way for you to, to be extra safe and to get a, um, a clearly better position. Um, okay. But first, I, I want to show just a clear example of a Greek gift. Like, let's imagine white develops, and then like you're so, you were so focused on casting, getting your king safe, but now uh, your king is... Now basically everything over. but safe after the greek gift starting with bishop h7 yeah and opposed. yeah this is a very very common tactical sequence especially from the french the french yeah. is probably like the one opening where this this sequence happens the most yeah regardless of wh whether you play I take, king i take and then you move your knight yeah knight g5 is coming again. no matter what pretty much yeah, your queen's open to come down and it's so, game over. Yeah, like king takes h7, knight g5, just to show the, the full sequence here. If you move back trying to save yourself, then queen h5 happens. You, uh, I mean, you're, you're practically getting mated almost by force. You can move your rook, let's say like rook e8. Um, but your whole king side is crumbling. There's queen takes f7. And then the queen moves back, and you're getting checked all over the place. Um, there might not be a easy win for white, but a move like queen h5 here threatening this is... Uh, it's not something you want to deal with. And um, Yeah, no, definitely not. 
it's better to learn this lesson in analysis in like a teaching session like this rather than like a serious competitive especially tournament game um yeah so, i feel like people learn that learn this uh oh my god i can sack that bishop pretty early yep um and the guys that i'm going to be competing against and nothing would make them happier than than pulling that destroying off destroying you with a greek gift yeah, yeah especially destroying in front of tens gift. of thousands of people yeah yeah, um, so we're not going to let that happen. So um, if you do, like whenever you castle, you should ask yourself if if your king side is vulnerable. Because sometimes it's just a matter of playing a move like h6. And there's cases where your king just stays in the center and it's it's even more safe in the center because it's hard for white to, to get to. There's cases also where you're the one attacking on the king side with h6, g5. Um especially if white castles and then you can maybe use this plan um i want to go back actually a few moves because there there was an even better way of playing which was a little bit counterintuitive but hopefully when i show it it will make sense and it's an idea okay. to to really keep in mind as a french player it's in this position and the move that you were most inclined to play was was bishop e4 check like just completing developments even like gaining a tempo because you develop with check. Um, but there's kind of a, a positional rule in the French where one of white's best pieces in this structure is a light squared bishop. It's like white's most dangerous piece because it, it's the one that's usually used to create this uh, these attacking ideas on the king side. So sometimes yep. you want to go out of your that. way to trade off this bishop so then you don't even have to live in fear later in the middle game. Yeah. Um, so do you see a move here which aims to trade off or just aims to get rid of the, the bishop on c2? I could go knight to c or knight to b4. Knight b4, yeah. And even though you're violating some kind of opening principle, like you are moving away from the center, you're moving the same piece twice. You can get away with it in this position because you're you're still like rock solid, like you're not vulnerable in any way here. And if if you can make this trade, then it's it just makes life a lot easier for you, and your king side will be less in danger later on. Um, if we look from White's perspective, it's hard to actually save the bishop really effectively. Save it, yeah. White could play bishop b three, but then the bishop's on a terrible square, like it's just staring uh, at the face of your pawn chain. Um, and not only this, but after a bishop here, uh, then you can, you have a nice way to really potentially destroy white right, right away with bishop to b5. I, yeah, I was looking at that to keep him from castling. Not only preventing white from castling, which is already really nice, but you, then you're threatening knight d3 here. And it's just a weak square in white's territory. You're controlling more times. If you get the knight to d3, right. it can be very, very troublesome for white. Imagine white just kind of ignores everything, develops knight d3, and then white, white has nowhere good to go with the king. King here, here aligns with your bishop. Oh. Right. And then you have a discovery. You take on b2, hitting the king and the queen. Game over. And yeah. then if king d2, you take on f2 with a fork. So game over. Yeah, it goes to show like how quickly White's position can crumble with just uh, a couple of wrong moves. Ooh, I like that. Um, yeah, and th this really started from uh, after Bishop d7, Bishop c2. This is a moment where like you should already have the intention of taking with the idea of getting the knight here to trade off the bishop. Okay, and it's hard for white that's a, that's uh, to do with that. Yeah, um, that's definitely an idea. And and this sort of thing, like it can happen in different types of positions, not just this exact position. So if you just remember the pattern, your pawn here, knight here, bishop here, and uh, and this structure, just try and uh, try and just internalize this pattern of taking a knight before. Um, because if you get something like this, you're you're pretty much guaranteed to get rid of the bishop. Um, yeah. Now, if we look at maybe a slightly better way White can deal with this, let's say White just castles here. Then, 
you don't waste any time. Just take the bishop as your plan all along. Queen will take back. And then you get what we can call a very nice uh, French structure where you removed white's light squared bishop. You have the C file to work with. Um, very often your rook can come to C8 either now. You can complete the kingside development first. Um, it is still a question how you develop your kingside pieces. Um, I'll throw in one move. Well, let's say you throw in rook C8 because it's a move you you play That's usually at some point. Move, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's say. Actually, I want to test you tactically. There's here. always that chance I don't move the queen, you know. <laughs> Wait, what was there's it? always that chance that the, there's always the chance of the mouse slip and they don't move. The oh board. yeah, um, they 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 don't see yeah, how yeah. the 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 board's connected. Most people should see this. They're gonna, they're gonna move the queen, yeah. Uh, but there there is a chance they'll move the queen to uh the wrong square where you you completely exploit them. Let's say they play queen e2. This is why it's really important to like constantly look for tactics before you kind of look for the natural moves. Um, oh yeah, I, now I can go. Uh, I can go there, and it'll take, takes. and I can go there. I go there. Oh no! You just lost all your pieces. <laughs> oh okay, forget it, forget it, forget it. Go that back. was almost go brilliant. Uh, I, I I was actually curious what your follow up was was going to be. You almost. Yeah, um, uh, not um okay um, it's good though it, it, and it's it's very important when you when you consider an option like this you, oh, you oh, visualize oh, what's okay. coming now, now I've, um, whatever this is called now i'm gonna win a rook or i'm gonna win the exchange yep bishop Maybe. bishop b5 yeah yeah uh we call this a skewer um, okay sometimes like if the rook and queen were flipped it would be a pin where you'd pin the rook to the queen but yep when the stronger piece is in front, it's a skewer. The queen has to move somewhere. And then you win the rook for the bishop. So you win basically two points of material. Um, so, and this is like going back to just kind of the general yeah. French ideas. When you remove yeah. white's light squared bishop, uh, and in that case for your knight, and you keep your own light squared bishop, your light squared yes. bishop can be sometimes twice as powerful because you you're going to be controlling light squares and white doesn't have the bishop to really contest the light squares. Well, so usually, the light squared bishop in the French is like a terrible piece too, right? Usually, I mean, yeah, it has this reputation of being like the the biggest problem with the French because it's a bishop that's stuck yeah. behind your pawn chain. Yeah. But when you be, when you play the French more and more, you'll realize that your bishop sometimes it'll start off by just hibernating early in the game and then later in the game it'll have opportunities to really come alive and yeah. very often it comes alive along this diagonal um and there's other cases oh, sometimes where you you bring the bishop to b5 to eventually trade like if white still have the bishop on d3 sometimes you go for the bishop trade but in this case you use it, you use it to win material this is exactly the kind of like going C3 is exactly the kind of move that is awesome for guys my ranking, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not giving up much and you're giving them a chance to blunder. Right? Exactly. I mean, uh, it, 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 and, and a lot of players I think would go to E2. Like, it's such a natural move. Like yeah. the queen's attacked, you don't want to move to D2 because it blocks yeah. your bishop. So um, I will say, like, the, the best move here is knight C3 to develop the knight and protect the queen. Yeah. Uh, this does walk into a pin, so maybe it's a bit less natural. Um, yeah, and if he did that, then, you know, I would go like that. Um, yep, completely fine. Yeah, you you pressure the pin piece, you get ready to develop your knight, and uh, there, there's not too much to worry about here for you. Like, there, there's not, not a huge kingside attack for white, um, and you're still going to have the ideas of pressuring this d4 pawn with your not only with your queen but with your knight. Yep. So there, there's a lot of pressure points here between the d4 pawn, the knight on c3, um, and you can kind of pick and choose depending how white proceeds of what what targets you want to focus on. But I think this was kind of a good initial example to show just some some very typical ideas and show how it can just be really comfortable for you early on. Um, where you, you you strive to get rid of this bishop early and then 
then go ahead and, and kind of complete development. Yeah, I love I, I, I love getting getting rid of that white square bishop mm -hmm. plan. That's, I, I never heard that one before. That's that's good. Okay, yeah, that's good. And then sometimes it's not the most intuitive thing. Like maybe the the Nishigiri course will cover like the most theoretical lines first, where White's playing like a super GM. But a lot of lower level players will, in one way or another, uh, not hold on to their bishop in these structures or end up losing the center pawn. So um, it's good to know how to kind of punish the the common mistakes from White. Um. Now, I don't want to overwhelm you with like too many different types of plans or ideas, but I think this is this is a good starting point. Um, and I, what I probably I recommend, your, yeah, yeah. Can I? So I take. Uh oh, whose move is it? I, I'm I not entirely sure they, if we're synced up. Um, Let's let me actually clear the board. Give me one oh, moment here. All right. Oh, maybe we are synced up. You see the pieces moving, right? Yeah. Okay. Was there a moment you were you wanted to ask uh, about? Uh, I got to move the bishop. I, I I almost made the same mistake again that got my queen. Uh yeah. Bishop, bishop d7, very important. Yeah. How to do? Bishop d7. Okay. Yeah, there's a few small details early on, but um, what I was going to recommend is I, th I think you should just start playing this, playing the French when you encounter e4 in your online games. Okay. And then, yeah. then kind of reflect on what you're running into most often. And yeah. then, then we can build from there. Like, there, there's a lot of, lot of things we can expand upon. And, um, I didn't do this initially, but I, I should kind of give you a breakdown. When you play the French, there's a lot of different things white can play as well. We covered one of the most yeah. common lines. Another thing the that exchange. you kind of have to be ready for is exchange, which is also probably one of the most common things you'll run into um, at your level. This one doesn't. Yeah, this one doesn't bother bother me is like, OK, you know, I can now I just come that way. Right. Or I go. Uh, the night out and castle kingside and so and th this should not bother you at all because you you already have you have a position where your pieces are not restricted and there's actually a yeah. lot of different setups you can employ here um and you can you can actually employ something that resembles a joe bava london which yeah. I, I would be very much inclined to show you because even Let's though this that. is a completely different opening than Jobava London, you can basically do a setup where your knight goes here, your bishop develops here, here, your other bishop comes here, your knight comes here. You actually end up casting queenside. And then well, you, you later one. attack on the king side. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, 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 I'll be uh, more in tune with that one, I think. Definitely. And, and what I'm showing you is actually a pretty reputable setup against most things white can white can do and you you can you can go from like a very kind of seemingly dry symmetrical position to a really exciting position if you get the opposite side casting the scenario so, so it's a reverse uh, reverse think reverse travada pretty much maybe with a, a few minor changes like sometimes your your light squared bishop will come here uh potentially to pin the knight um there's cases where okay. you, you you can still choose and um but apart from that your the pieces actually go in in pretty much the same squares as joe baba london so this should already be in your wheelhouse um and maybe i we can just play it out from here and see how you uh okay. how you execute the setup okay, okay so I'm, I'm gonna give you a, a few small pointers as we go ahead i'm gonna say that you you don't start with bishop f5 because you're not sure okay. yet if your bishop wants to go here or here you should start by developing your queenside knight. Oh, the queenside knight. Okay. You know your knight's going to go here in this setup. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, and the, the whole plan is to eventually castle queenside. Okay. Um, so this is ju just what we call being flexible. You play the move that yeah. you know you're going to play first to keep some other options open. Okay. Uh, let's say white plays bishop d3. Uh, 
Um, awesome. Go there. Very flexible move. This this is like the best square for your dark square bishop in these sort of positions. And um, again, you're staying flexible with your other pieces. Let's say like castles. Okay. Uh, well, I could pin your knight now to your queen, and that gets the bishop out of the way so that I can castle queen side. That that looks like a reasonable plan. Love it. Yeah, when you play bishop here, you're um, <clears throat> you're pinning the knight. You might have the idea of taking. Um, of course, you always have to be aware of the yeah. potential complications, but uh, you are probably threatening to win the pawn here. So white does have to be careful. Uh, let's imagine white throws in the check. Not a problem. Go there awesome. and develop. And yeah, just developing, blocking the check. And you've you've already developed all your minor pieces, so you're you arguably ahead in development here. You still do need to castle. You're still threatening the pawn. Yeah. Uh, very natural yeah. for White to play c3. OK. Uh, don't want to remove any of the tension there. And I want to get castled. I'm going to move my queen mm -hmm. up and protect my bishop. Love it. Uh, and get ready to castle. We'll play this move. Awesome. And this is really the, the ideal setup. Um, and then going forward from here, I think the like understanding the the attacking I, I, uh, plans and ideas are also pretty. Now I'm going all in, running, running my pawns down the H file, the G file, and yeah. See what happens. So the the pawn swarm is so natural here, like especially moving the H pawn all the way up. Um, like if you get your pawn to H three, there it can create a lot of weaknesses in White's camp. If White ever plays H three, there is a potential of sacrificing. Um, on top of that, you have like f6, g5 is typical. Sometimes you bring your knight in to g6 and then f4. So you just have a lot of kind of attacking moves in your toolbox and you can choose them kind of as you wish. Um, I imagine if you start playing the French more and more, you'll kind of, you'll, you'll get these positions and you'll kind of get a better sense of of what happens further down the road. I just want to want you to play one more move and then, uh, yeah, h5, very fine. Um, and yeah, concept of, of h4, h3 coming. And I think this is, yeah, this, this kind of goes back to your Joe Vava London attacking wheelhouse. So. Yeah. Um, so that, that might be another reason why the French is a good fit for you, because if you get the exchange variation that's already in in the sort of position you you know how to deal with. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love that concept because it it, mem it minimizes the number of things I got to think about. Right. Um, Definitely. OK, they do exchange. I know try to get to I'm trying to get the reverse or trying to get Jababa's black. You don't do exchange. I got to bring the queen out. I got to make sure I get the d7 bishop in there. Yeah, yeah. If you can kind of distinguish the different types of positions you're getting, um, and kind of categorize them and and, and know the different ideas for each one, that will, will hopefully simplify things for you. Because I know, I guess when you learn the French, you're learning like a few different setups. But there's still hopefully yeah. things you can you can fully understand and, and play at a good level. Um, I don't want to overwhelm awesome. you with too much like more new information. I think the fact that we covered yeah. the exchange and the like the exchange and the advance are the two most common things you'll run into. Uh, we might want to save the other other options White can play for next time. Um, you mean you're not going to make me a IM in one in one lesson? What was that? <laughs> You're not going to turn me into an I oh, in one lesson. I, I I wish I had those oh. abilities. It, it takes it takes a little oh. bit of uh, patience and, um, I mean, based on what you've said, uh, at least in our previous conversation, it seems like you're studying 
way more than a lot of master level players these days. I, I don't know any master level player who's been studying as much as you. So you're, yeah. you're, you're probably catching up, up to us in, in some regard, like you're improving at a faster rate. Yeah, I'm also 50 and you don't learn nearly as fast um, when you're old. So enjoy it while you're young. But you're you're still um, you're still showing that you can you can improve. Like you're not it's not that you're 50 and you're just not going to improve at all. Like the fact that you've only been playing chess for a year and you're already at like a pretty good level. I think it's giving some hope to the the older older chess players out there. You're being very kind. Um and and thank you for your time morning i know we've got you know big tournaments on and every, lots of other stuff you can be doing but uh, and thanks to the audience as well yeah, yeah it's, it's been a pleasure to, uh, eric's channel i will beg you to do so um i really appreciate great that teacher, really great content I've, I've been a big fan for the last year since i discovered jess um that's great to hear. mostly through streams um mm -hmm. I look forward to our next lesson together thank you yeah and, and i guess the, the homework i would give you is to play at least a handful of French games. Doesn't matter if you get crushed uh, if early. You mean 50, yeah, if, if by a handful you mean 50, uh, game on. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, that, that probably won't be a problem for you. But uh, but but play play them with a growth mindset. Like you're, you're going to run into things you probably have never seen before. And uh, make note of any games that you, you want to potentially go over or like games where you weren't sure what to do or weren't sure where you went wrong because those will be the, the most valuable to learn from. For sure. Okay. Well, I've got some new ideas to try. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. We'll be in touch. All right. I'll talk soon. Okay, bye.